soldiers in the army of the Lord. We got to work. Amen. Thank you for taking part in our brief devotion. Without further ado, we shall turn it over to our pastor. Let's have a good time in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Turn the mic up. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You can't praise the Lord silently. You gotta open your mouth. Praise gotta come out your mouth. Is there anybody here got anything, any reason to praise God? God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Surely for the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. God is good. And all the time, and turn and tell somebody he's good to me. Tell him like you really mean it. He's good to me. Bless the name of our God. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Bow in your presence with thanksgiving and with praise. Thanking you, O oh God, for a brand new day. Thanking you for brand new mercies. Thanking you for sufficient grace. We thank you, Lord, for unconditional and everlasting love. Lord, you didn't have to share this day with us, but you chose to give us this day. So as we enter into your house, we give it back to you and say, let your will be done. Be glorified in our gathering today. Bless us as only you can. We pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus, block the plan of the enemy that will seek to distract and disturb us. For today we celebrate your ultimate victory over our enemy. So now Lord as we gather don't just tabernacle us. Be Lord be Lord in this place. Do what you want to do. Our souls thirst for you. Our hearts long for you. Our lives live for you. Now do what you want to do. For your glory. Which ultimately and always turns out for our good. This, O oh Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. 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 We want to welcome each and every one of you to the house of the Lord today. Welcome all of our online visitors today. Amen. All our worshipers. We acknowledge the presence of Reverend T. Lewis Steele, Minister Damian Walker, Minister Deontay Guy. Join me and flank me. We thank God for Reverend West being with us today. Amen. Amen. And we have another pastor with us today, Pastor Coit. Wave your hand, Pastor Coit. Amen. <laughs> pastor Coit is a pastor of the Myers. Amen. 
Thurman Myers and those, amen. And we welcome him to be with us, amen. Amen. We welcome all of you. Amen. I'm trying to wait until I get one or two smiles before I go any further. I'm trying to wait until I get a couple people act like they just want to be somewhere in the house of the Lord. Amen. As I always do, I'm going to ask you to do something for me. Turn around and say hello to somebody. Wave to somebody. High five somebody. Amen. Amen. Music ministry is going to come now. And in our congregational song, Reverend T. Lewis Steele is going to lead us in the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Minister Deontay Guy is going to come with the morning prayer. Music ministry is going to come back again. And then we'll have ministry moments by how you can minister.
scripture lesson comes from the book of John chapter 20. The book of John chapter 20, I'll be reading verses 1 through 18. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and she found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for until then they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw the two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus. But she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary? Jesus said, and she turned and cried out, Rabboni, which is the Hebrew word for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I have yet to ascend to the Father. But go, find my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Yeah. And Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them this message. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Father and our God, we first and foremost come to say thank you. So many ways that you've made, so many doors you've opened, so many things that you have stopped, blocked, protected us from. So God, right now, as always, we come to say thank you. Oh, Father, how excellent is thy name. Way make your miracle work, a provider, strong tower. God, you are so many things to us. But the one name we love to call is that great name, Jesus. So right now, God, we come to just say thank you. So many days out the week, we ask you for things. We ask you for forgiveness. We ask you for provision. We ask you for so many things. But at this time, God, even though we said it last week, even though we said it last year, God, we say thank you. We say thank you, God, because there is no God like you. There is none like you, God. So many pray to so many different gods, but we know the name that is above every name, and that is your great name, God. So we say thank you, God, for being a God who listens, being a God who protects, being a God who answers, being a God who seeks comforts and provides and cares for his children God we come to say thank you because even though we might not have done everything that you have called us to do you still love us and protect us and God we say thank you God because you allowed us to get to this great place God you allowed us to worship your name in spirit and in truth God we come to say thank you God because although some may celebrate Easter we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and we say thank you God we say thank you God because you allow us to know that there is no other God but besides you there is no one that did what you did God there is no one that rose with power all great power that defeated death God so we say thank you God we say thank you Lord for the miracle signs and wonders God we say thank you, God, for the miracle signs and wonders that you did last week, that you did yesterday, that you're doing today, and that you're going to do tomorrow. God, we say thank you, God, because we are so undeserving of what you did on that cross. But we say thank you, Lord, for sparing our lives. We say, we say thank you, God, for sparing our families' lives. We say thank you, God, for sparing this nation. We say thank you, God, because we are so undeserving of what you did on Calvary. And all we can say is thank you. All we can do is lift our hands and worship you. All we can do is cry out, how great is your name. All we can cry out is, how great is thy faithfulness. All we can cry out is, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is thy name. All we can cry out is, Lord, forgive us of our sins. God, you are such a great, strong tower. So we just come to say thank you, God. You know the desires of our heart. You know our minds, God. So right now, God, we ask you to do one thing, and that's to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, oh God, and accept our worship to you today. Accept this offering of praise. Accept this offering of sacrifice. Accept this offering right now in Jesus' name. All we can do is say thank you, God. All we can do is say we love you, God. In Jesus' name. Come on, someone lift up the name of Jesus today. Come on, someone lift up the name of Jesus today. Come on, stand on your feet and say, Jesus, Jesus. Come on. Come on, worship.
song says, when I think about what is done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. How many of you can just take about five seconds and get a flashback of what God has done for you? Has God done anything for anybody up in here tonight? If God has done something for you, the song says, my soul cries out what? Come on, musicians, go ahead, come on. moments and we are coming from the children's church slash our uh, Sunday school so in children's church we teach our kids a lot about obviously the Bible and we're going over just right now etiquette and we're teaching the children just to learn about the word and right now we have a new member who actually came last week and we put him to work so if you are uh, would like your youth to be part of our children's church should we encourage you to join us we would also like help we need help. So right now we are under the ministry of uh, Damon, uh, Minister Walker, and uh, Brother Marquez and myself. So we need some support here, okay? So thank you. Right now you're going to be hearing from Je uh, Jada, Jesus, Alex, Lena, our new member, Kayon. <laughs> Africa and Samaja. So we're going to start off with our song. Put that down. Welcome one and all. I am as happy as can be standing here so tall, for I have an Easter wish. Welcome one and welcome all. E is for Easter, this special day. A is for angels near the tomb. S is for the stone that which was rolled away. T is for the tomb that was found empty that day. E is for Easter, it's here again. R is for risen.
have a couple of our Sunday students who have Sunday school students who are preparing speeches for us. So we have our young Journey and Janelle. My, my name is Journey Middleton. I am nine years old. And yeah. <laughs> my prayer of thanks, the blue and yellow butterfly, the eagle in her nest up high, be speak of God's unfailing love for each creature beneath his sky. As God cares for his creation, so his care for us is sure. For by his love he came to earth our freedom to secure. On this Easter morning, I pause a prayer to say to thank Jesus for rising to bring a new life today. May God bless you this Easter. Easter eggs, Easter lily, Easter dresses, soft and friendly, Easter bunnies, Easter hat, Easter this and Easter that. What is? What a sing song, little rhyme with words like drummers marking time. With one word, I rather say, thank you, Lord, He lives today. Hallelujah. again for those it's not very easy and if you know our little Janelle is very shy so we want to give a special 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 shout out to her for doing it today amen now we're going to go right into our Easter play The play takes place in A.D. The two disciples are on the road to Emos. They're discussing the passing of their Lord and the Savior and recalling important events they experienced with him. After Jesus was crucified and had risen from the dead, his followers were very sad and confused. They didn't know what was going to happen next. One day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emos. As they walked along, Jesus came and began walking with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. He made a lame man walk, made the blind man see. Five thousand people died, fed thousands of people. Two little fish and five loaves of bread. Him in his side, I'm gonna think back to him. Lord, remember me. And he said, This day you shall be with me in paradise. Oh, so you must have been there too. It was sad. Oh, yeah, I was there. Believe me, I was there. It was late in the day, so they asked a stranger who had been walking with them to stay the night with them. So Jesus went to their home. As they sat down to eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and gave it to them to eat. Suddenly, their eyes were open and they recognized him. At that very moment, he disappeared.
Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Thomas. Be careful what you ask for. I'm supposed to have nails in my hand. My blood fell off my side, y'all. Um, be careful what you ask for. You believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Jesus still reveals himself to his followers today, but he does it through his word and the Holy Spirit. He may not appear to you in the same way he did to the disciples in our scripture today, but if you study God's word and seek him with all your heart, Jesus will reveal himself to you.
They worked hard the last minute against a lot of challenges to work with these children and look at the awesome job the kids did this morning. Thank you, Ms. Edwards. Thank you, Rocky, Raquel. Amen. Minister Walker, Michelle, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I also want to thank the parents for trusting your children in the hands of the church. If you can trust them in the school district, you ought to be able to trust them in the hand of the church. Please make sure that your children are in Sunday school and youth ministry, children's church. We'll find something. Amen. We can get them on the instruments like James is and others. And please, 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 we plead with you. you know, many of us are here today because our parents didn't take our reasons for not wanting to go to church. We did not have an option. We did not have a choice. They knew that if we, were, if we were trained up in the way in which we would go, we might depart, but we would return. Amen. And so parents, both here and online, please make sure your children are attached to a Bible teaching, Bible believing, Bible practicing church. Amen. Let's give our young people another hand. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Y'all did good. Very good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. And they look good too. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Every second Sunday here at the Union Church, for those of you who are visiting us for the first time, every second Sunday is Youth Sunday. And youth govern the service. Amen. But they work all month to be there. We've got a youth choir. Amen. Got a youth choir. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all can y'all y'all can skedaddle. As they're repositioning themselves, I just want to ask, is there anyone here visiting us for the very first time? Just lift your hand. If you're visiting us for the very first time, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. Glad to have you. Come on, Union, let's put our hands together for those. Amen. Who are visiting us for the very, very first time. Amen. Amen. A couple of... A couple of... A couple of announcements today, amen, as we prepare ourselves for our tithes and our offering. First of all, I want to say thank you. Union Church, we worked hard this week. Amen. We worked hard this week. Some of us were at uh, Morning Star this week. And when we went over to Sweet Pilgrim on Thursday night, we had a few in the choir, a few in the audience. I want to say thank you for your support. And then didn't the Lord bless us on Good Friday? Didn't the Lord bless us tremendously? As we had associates at the cross right here at the Union Church. And then I looked out in the audience, saw one or two of you over when uh, we preached at the uh, Hudson River. Oh, yeah. Amen. On Friday evening. Amen. But I want to thank the Shepherd's Ministry too. Amen. Because it was hard to do Good Friday while we were smelling fish from downstairs. But they blessed us as well. Amen. And I know the first Sunday of every month is when we recognize those who have birthdays in our congregation. But um, tomorrow is our youth minister's birthday. Amen. 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 So we want to wish him a happy birthday so he don't have to wait a whole week. Quite a few announcements, but we're not going to spend a lot of time. Watch your emails, follow us online, and we'll give you an announcement. Let's go before the Lord and let's prepare to bring our tithes and our offerings. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we have to give. We thank you for the desire and the determination to give. Now, God, bless us as we come. We come cheerfully. We come sacrificially. We come obedient to your word to bring our tithes and our offering to the storms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need a young person. Judy.
go. But she's good in the choir, eh, man? We go, somebody, anybody, just hold it. All right, come on. We always get our young people to hold our building fund. Because our building fund is not only for us, it's for, okay, we got two of them. We got two of them. Both of them hold it together. Show them how to do it. Show them how to do it. Amen. Let's put our hands together for these two young people. Amen. And what they're going to do. They're holding the basket for our building fund. We've been comfortable 97 years, but we will make sure we leave them facilities so they can train and worship in, amen? So let's give to the building fund. All right, let us all stand and come as a, directed by the ushers.
mothers of our church, Sister Velma Miller, this morning in our prayers. We'll remember Sister Francesca Randolph in our prayers and all of those that appear on our sick and our shut-in list. Not only those that are on our sick and shut-in list, but those who are going through life as life has it. There's some, you don't have to be in a hospital you don't have to be in prison. You don't have to be anywhere. You can be functioning every day, clapping your hands in church, shouting, singing, bills paid, and still standing in need of prayer. So this time, if you would like to pray together with us, want to come to the altar, I invite you to the altar today. You don't have to come to the altar. As God hears us whenever, however. The altar is open. Maybe everything's okay in your life. But you want to lift someone else up in prayer. Father, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Father God, we come to you, Lord God, with open hearts, with humble hearts, Lord God. First of all, just saying thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your blood that was shed on Calvary. Thank you, Thank you, Lord God, for the forgiveness of all our sins, sins that we have committed and omitted. Thank you, Lord God, for the blood that continues to save us, you, the blood that continues to raise us, the blood that continues to heal us, the blood that continues to forgive us, Lord God. And Father, you said in your word, if my people would call upon my name, Lord God, that you would heal us, Lord God, from all types of things, Lord God, drug addiction, sin, Lord God, that is deep rooted in many of us, Lord God. For we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. So we come to you right now, Lord God, as humbly as we know how, Lord God, and we ask for forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness so that our prayers this morning will not be turning closer to you, Lord God. Lord, as the deer panthers for the water, so our soul longs after you. Father, I don't know the needs of those who have come standing before your throne of grace, but I don't need to know because you're an all-knowing God. 
And so we thank you, Lord God, and we ask you right now, Lord God, that you grant us the petitions of our heart, Lord God. You said it in your word that you would give us the desires of our heart if we draw near to you, Lord God. Draw us closer, Lord God. Draw us closer, Lord God, for those who may need healing in their body, for those who may need healing of their minds, for those who may need healing in their spirit, touch them right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. There may be someone here who's in need of a job, Lord God, but we know, Lord God, that you are the greatest provider that we know. And so we ask you right now, Lord God, that you remove those obstacles, Lord God, and that you would open up a door that no man can close, Lord God. And you, Lord, you grant them the opportunity to find and gainful employment, Lord God. For those who may be in the midst of a broken relationship, Lord God, you are a restorer. And so we ask you to restore those things, Lord God. We pray right now for marriages that may need healing. We pray for marriages that may need strengthening. We pray for our little babies, Lord God, that you cover them, that you keep them, Lord God. And Father, we cannot leave this throne of grace without asking you, Lord God, to continue to pour back into the shepherd of this house, Lord God, as he continues to pour out day after day, week after week. We ask you, Lord God, that you pour a fresh anointing into him, Lord God. Father, we love you so much. Our hearts are just so overwhelmed on today. Let us not forget, Lord God, why we are here on today. Lord, you are alive. You have risen. And we are so grateful, Lord God. The tomb is empty. So we thank you, Lord God. We honor you. We just bless your name on today. And we ask for all these things. In the precious name of your Son and our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ of Nazareth, we do pray. And all the people of God say, Amen. 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 Lift it up. I love you.
Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Father, we thank you. Not only for being wonderful, but for being wonderful to us. Now, Lord, as we pull our chairs up to your table, we pray, God, that you would release that which you have for us. That preordained move before the foundation of the world, you knew we would be right here at this time. So we surrender, we submit. We have ears to hear what your spirit is saying unto the church. Bless us now in a supernatural way for your glory and for our good. It is in Jesus' name that we ask this. Thus we will leave it to be done. Once again, let's give God praise for the ministry of music. It's a great exodus happening behind me. Amen. 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 time that is mine, I want to invite your attention to the New Testament book of Philippians. New Testament book of Philippians. New Testament book of Philippians in chapter 3. I've chosen for our consideration this morning the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter 3, two verses, verses 10 and 11. The New Living Translation. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Allow me to, if you will, I want to also read it from the Amplified Bible. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 and 11 from the Amplified Version where it reads, And this so that I may know him experientially, becoming more acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely. And in the same way, experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers. And that I might share the fellowship of his sufferings and being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness even to his death, dying as he did, so that I may attain to the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. I want to talk about this morning, just for a few moments, um, resurrection power. My right. brothers and sisters, we gather this morning, in which the world calls Easter Sunday morning, uh, to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only do we come to celebrate, but we come to announce to the world that our God, our Savior, our Redeemer is alive and is well. Not only do we come to celebrate and to announce, but a few have come to even demonstrate that God's love God's power is available to everybody. Amen. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is the centrality, it is the central focus of our faith. 
that resurrection was an amazing event that so powerfully changed history. Today, I want to talk about how the power of the resurrection not only changes history, but can change you and I. The word of God serves y'all as for several purposes. One, it reveals to us who God is, but it also reveals who we are in God. And then it reveals what God wants to do in and through us. The resurrection is not simply an event that happened over 2,000 years ago. The power of the resurrection is still at work here and now today. The power of the resurrection is tied up in the person of the resurrection. Um, the person of the resurrection is Jesus the Christ. But not only was he resurrected from the dead, he proclaimed himself, and I'm a witness and believe, that he truly is the resurrection. The Apostle Paul comes later on. And he writes to the church of Philippi and to you and I that after all that he had been through, all the training he had had, all the, all the experience he had had, and, and, and the mysteries that were revealed to him by the Father and the Holy Spirit, he, 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 he says, I want to know him. I want to know not just who he is, but I want to understand the power of his resurrection. And that's what Paul is saying. I want to experience right, right, right. resurrection power in my life. I just don't want it a page of history. I just don't want it a Sunday school lesson that I prayed through. But I want to literally experience the power of the resurrection. And that's the purpose of this little message I got this morning, y'all, is that we all, like Paul, may begin to experience in our personal lives, if not begin to experience, continue to experience at an ever-increasing rate the power of the resurrection of God. First, we must ask ourselves, what is this power? What is this power? First of all, it is a converting power. It has power to, to convert us. Because believe it or not, Josh, we are all born in sin. And shaping in iniquity. All have sinned. Turn, turn your neighbor, I have too. Unless somebody just look and think that you're talking about them. Me too. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Believe it or not, God makes the rules. He makes the rules. It doesn't matter how you feel about it, what, 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 what society says about it. God makes sure he determines truth from a lie. He determines what's right and wrong. He determines sin from disobedience because he is sovereign. It means he is in a class all by himself and what he says goes no matter what you feel about it. He is sovereign. He, and as a matter of fact, if I want a God who can heal me when I'm sick, who can pay my bills when I'm broke. I need a God who is over everybody else's opinion and speculation. God himself is sovereign. He has the absolute final word. When he speaks, it is the bottom line. The Bible makes it clear that man's disobedience separated him, you and I, from God. Adam started this thing when he listened to his wife Eve and they didn't believe that God was sovereign, but they listened to the enemy who told them the day you will not surely die, but you'll become like God. They believe a lie. They were already like God because they were made in the image and likeness of God. But because they thought God was hiding something from them, they believed a lie. And in 2024, many people are believing the lies of the world. You and I cannot do what we want to do and get away with it. We do not write the rules. Let me, let me, let me retract that statement. We can do what we want to do, but you cannot choose your consequences. 
God will allow you, you can do, you can live the way you want to live, you can set your own standard, you can write your own rules, but when God said it, God is going to hold us accountable and we're going to have to come. All, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We must understand that. But when they believe that lie, they surely die. Not a physical death, but a spiritual death. Death means separation. They were alive and existing, but they didn't have a God within them. Sin separated man from God, but God loved man so much that he had to do two things. He had to deal with the sin and save the man that he loved. So he, he, he says, um, he says, um, he writes to us in Ephesians 2, and I want to read it. As for you, verse 1, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Now, you have to understand, this has to be a spiritual death. Because you don't talk to physically dead people. So he's, he's, it has to be. He says, as for you, you were dead in your trespasses, transgressions, and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world. I want to serve notice. I want to serve notice. It's not in my, in my script. But I want to serve notice. Many of us are trying to follow the ways of the world. And rely on society and people who have no relationship with God to tell us that we can do what we want to do. Be, be, beware. Government cannot legislate what's right and wrong. You can't wake up one day and say, this. it might be right for you, but if it's not right for God, it's wrong for you. Amen. To live according, you follow the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our own sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But, because of God's great mercy and God's love for us, he made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. And it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in coming to ages he might show the incom incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness. It is by grace you have been saved through faith and that's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. I know I read all that. Guess what God's saying? I love you so much. I got, I got power to save you. I've got love to save you. I, I, you. You're dead in your trespass and sin, but I love you enough that I'll rescue you. I will save you. My brothers and sisters, the power of the resurrection has the power to convert us from sinners to saints. From sinners. Sinners means those who are separated from God. The condition of sin, not the act of sin. The condition of sin, those who are separated from God, and then saints are those, not the, the, the Catholicism stuff like, like that, but those of us who are born again and saved. Yes. It has power to convert. Y'all looking at me funny, but then it has, secondly, it has power to conquer. Resurrection power has power to conquer. John 10 and 10 says, the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead conquered, defeated, and overcame everything the devil tried to do in our lives. Let me say that again. The resurrection of Jesus Christ conquered, defeated, and overcame everything that the devil tried to do in our lives. Jesus was flogged. He was beaten. The enemy tried to steal his dignity and his strength. He was trying to break him on Calvary. But Jesus overcame that. Jesus was crucified. The enemy wanted to kill him. And he did die, but the enemy did not kill him. 
You cannot kill the God who gives life because he has no beginning and neither does he have an end. So no man took his life. He gave his life, but the enemy thought he had killed him. Jesus was buried and sealed into a borrowed tomb. The enemy wanted to get us to believe that he was done away with. But we gather this morning in recognition and in faith and declaring that he came out of that grave with all power in his hand. The Bible declares on the third day, he got up just like he said he would. He could not be stopped. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ is conquering power. That's why the Bible says those who trust in him are not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Y'all looking at me funny. Um, I need a few of you who can testify just by raising your hand or shouting to God that when people thought you were gone, when people thought you would never make it, when people thought you were not going to get through, you are here today and can testify that God in you is unstoppable. It is conquering power. So now I don't run from the devil. I don't run from haters. I don't run from people who talk about me. Right now, I stand in the power of the resurrection. Because if God can conquer death, God can conquer disease, God can conquer poverty, God can conquer low self-esteem, there's nothing God cannot conquer if he can conquer death. And I'm going to testify today. It's, listen, he has power over death. He has conquering power. There's no greater power than resurrection power. There's no greater power than resurrection power. And I want you to understand today, when you trust in Christ as your Savior, the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. And when you declare the name of Jesus and you live in the ways of Jesus, your enemy can't handle you. You can look the devil square in the face, eye to eye, flat footed and tell the devil where to go. See, we talk about this, 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 this cash and cars gospel. This gospel ain't about what I have. It's not about what I own, what I possess. It's about who I am in him. I wish I had a two or three witnesses. Yeah, I might weep, but it only lasts for a night. I might fall, but I get up seven times. And you might form a weapon against me, but it will not prosper. And this power is so good, it's so, so powerful, it's so conquering, and it's so, it's so converting, and watch this, it's also conforming, that even if they bring me, roll me down this aisle, lay me out in a coffin, just people speak lies over my life, close that coffin up, drive me to the cemetery, Drop me into the grave and say ashes to ashes, earth to earth and dust to dust. The resurrection power is so powerful in our lives that that is not the end of my story. So I'm not afraid of death because the God that I serve has conquered death. Not afraid of death, not afraid of enemies, not afraid of anything. And that's not being cocky, that's being faithful. That's knowing that God, who, 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 rose, who rose Christ from the grave, will also rise me from the grave. For those he did foreknow, he did predestined to become, be conformed to the image of his son. And Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brothers. 
is a firstborn among many brethren. And so God, the resurrection power, is converting power. It converts me from death to life, from death to eternal life. It's conquering power to overcome any foe that I may, any enemy that I may, uh, but it's also conforming power. God is at work in us who know him, and every day he is making us better. It's, it's the idea of clay in the hand of a potter. Even though I mess up, and I do, and I'm, when I say I, I'm talking about us. But I want you to know I'm included in that I. But even though I mess up, God is still working on me. Y'all miss your shout. Y'all help me preach it for one second. I'll be done with you. Tell your neighbor, God is still working on me. And I'm so glad God is not done with me yet. He's done some work in my life, but he ain't done with me yet. Is there anybody here can testify that God is still working on me? And the way I know God is still working on me, I can't sin like I used to. I don't cuss as much as I used to. I, come on here, somebody. I don't drink like I used to. God is still forming and conforming me because of the power of the resurrection. And you know why I like the power of the resurrection? Because every morning I wake up and no matter what's going on in my life, I, I declare this is the day that the Lord has made. And he, I will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what I face every day because of the power of the resurrection, I declare I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know what? I don't mind what's going on in my life because I know who I know and I know where I'm going. Is there anybody in here today can give God praise because God has given you resurrection power? Well, I'm finished now, y'all. I, I really am. I'm done. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, Three, verse 20 it says uh, 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 and now unto him <laughs> who is able to do exceeding and abundant more than I can ask him or even imagine watch this that's saying that God can break out of every box I put him in that I, if I ask him to pay my bills, he can pay my bills. If I ask him to heal my body, he can heal my body. If I ask him to protect my child, he can protect my child. But guess what? He can do more than I can even think about. Has God ever opened a door you never thought was going to be open? Have God ever made a way you never thought he was going to make a way? Has God ever told science to sit back and sit down and I let the science know even though the doctor say you, there's no more can be done, I can still heal? I can still raise from the dead? Has God ever made a way for you when you know you didn't deserve the way? But I want to tell you, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, And now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or imagine. Watch this. According... Read the Bible. Read the Bible. According to the power that's at work within you. I wish I had some church folk. I don't have to run to God for power because I've got God in me that has power. Y'all still didn't get it. I got some friends that have to get a mat and find the east in order to get their power. I've got some other friends that got to find a priest and go into a confession booth and get absolution to get their power. I've got some other people who've got to fast this day or fast that way to get their power. But can I tell you for the child of God, the Christian, the one who trusts in Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, 24-7, 365 from the east to the west from the north to the south I've got power on the inside 
And it's not power that I stole. It's power that God gave me. Is there anybody in here that's got power? When you got power, you'll lay hands on your children while they're still in the womb. When you got power, you'll sneak into their room and ask the Lord to bless them. And even though they go out there, the bullet won't hit them. When you got power, you'll lay hands on your dime and your dime will come a dollar and your dollar will come ten dollars and your ten dollars will come a hundred dollars and your hundred dollars will come a thousand dollars and your thousand dollars come ten thousand. I know what I'm talking about. No man has any power other than the power that's at work in you. So you got to learn how to stir up that power. You got to learn how to put that power to work. And all you got to do is call on one name. Ain't no other name. One name. You ain't got to worry about Hokel. You ain't got to worry about anybody else. You ain't got to worry about Trump or Biden. You ain't got to worry about anybody else. There is one name that releases power. And that name causes demons to flee. That name causes the devil to tremble. That name causes your haters to get back. That name causes the sun to stop shining. That name causes the moon to drip away in blood. That name causes you power. Does anybody know the name? The name is Jesus. 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 And there's no other name whereby you might be saved. Buddha can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. Covington can't save you. Krishna can't save you. There's only one name you might be able to be saved. And if you know like me, you better call on that name. And while you still have time, there's power in that name. There's power in that name. There's power in that name. I'm a living witness. There's power in that name. I need about five of y'all who are real witnesses that you can call on that name. When I'm tempted, I call on that name. When I'm tried, I call on that name. I need about five of y'all to help me with the unbelieving ones around you that there's power in that name. Jesus! If you don't believe me, shut yourself up in your bathroom one day and just start calling on the name of Jesus. Just start calling on the name of Jesus. If you're driving down a road, you start calling on that name, you're going to have to pull over because there's power in that name. When you go into the hospital room to visit your loved one, call that name. Put it in the atmosphere. Put it in the atmosphere and everything will change. But you got to have him on the inside because when he's on the inside, when you call on that name, that power comes out. That is not what I wanted to talk about this morning. But it is what I wanted to talk about. I want to tell you this. Celebrating Easter. Showing up in church on Easter. All that is really nice. But that won't save you. It won't save you. It won't, it won't give you the power you need to make it. In this world, the only thing that will save you is for you to believe that God loves you, He conquered your enemy, and He wants to save you. He died, but He got up. The power is in the resurrection. If there be no resurrection, all we're doing is in vain. It's just another show on a Sunday morning. But is God in your heart? Have you trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And you can't be a closet Christian. You can't say, yeah, I'm spiritual and yeah, God is that. You got you to gotta be bold about your faith. You got to be bold. Everything else and everybody else coming out, but Christians stay in the closet. No, I'm serious. There's some people here today that you'll, go, you'll, you'll come to church on Sunday, go to work or school on Monday, and won't nobody know you're a Christian. Matter of fact, if you told them, they'd be surprised you were a Christian. 
If you were to post on your, on, your, on your social media that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and they look at all your other posts, they'd be surprised you're a Christian. But it's time to come out the closet. It's time to come out of sin. It's time to come out of death. And as we all stand together, today, not tomorrow, not tomorrow, today. You know why not tomorrow? Because we don't even know if there'll be tomorrow. Not one of us in here can declare that we will be breathing this afternoon. Not one of us. But the only moment we have any control over is this very moment right here and right now. Hold on for a second, guys. The only moment we have control over is this very moment. That's all of us. That's every human being, every creature right now. Because the next moment is not promised. When I was in recovery, they used to tell us, live one day at a time. But I found out I couldn't live one day at a time. I had literally had to live one heartbeat at a time. Because one heartbeat you're here, and the next heartbeat you're gone or the next lack of heartbeat. So I'm gonna ask you to do, do this with me today. If you don't mind, just close your eyes. Don't look around. Don't look at anybody else. Today, if you know you have not asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and you want to be saved, you want to have eternal life, I'm not talking about becoming a church boy or a church girl. I'm talking about having eternal life. Being at peace with God. If that's you today, can you lift your hand? If you want to make a decision today. If you want to make a decision today to give your life to Christ. Can you just lift your hand? All right. I see those hands lifted. Now. Keep the hand up. Keep the hand up. Don't. Everybody's eyes are closed. Everybody's head is down. If you know and you're very serious about giving your life to Christ today, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make your way to this altar. Don't put your hand down now. Don't think about it three times. I want you to come here. Come forward right now. That's right. That's right. Come forward right now. Like from the bottom. If you're not ashamed, I'm going to tell you, it's a hard place to be. Thank you. There's another. God bless you. God bless you. No, you don't have to face them. Face me. They, they, they're still making a decision for themselves. Nancy, you can turn around this way. Is there someone else today? My soul. Ed, Rodney, y'all come and help me out here. Now, I, I have another question. You've been saved. You've even been a part of a church, but you've not been attending. You've not been participating. And you need to recommit your, your life to Christ, but also you need to reinstate your membership. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not an Easter faith if you're here today it's not by accident if you're here today you guys can put your hands down if you're here today and you want to reinstate your membership you want to recommit your life to Christ I want you to come now don't think twice about it remember this is the only moment you can think about it God bless you God bless you God bless you is there another Come on, sweetie. Come on. Come on. That's right. She had her hand up. Is there another? From the bottom. Is 
to another. I didn't see you. Amen. Now, now, while your head is still bowed and while your eye is still closed, none of the things I said made any sense to you. You couldn't put it together. I didn't make it clear enough for you. But you know you need to make a commitment to God. If that's you, we'll help you clarify whatever commitment that is. If that's you, I will invite you to come now. Don't worry about what anyone else is saying or thinking or doing. This is between you and God. Is there someone here that says this and I, I want to make a commitment? Completely. My soul. I'm going to read two. I'm going to say two scriptures. You all may be seated. Two scriptures. The first scripture is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life that means me you anyone the second scripture I want to read I want to say is Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So those of you who came for salvation and anyone who didn't come but want to be saved and anyone watching but want to be saved, I just want you to repeat after me. Dear God, I confess I'm a sinner. And I believe that you love me and sent your son for my salvation. I believe Jesus is Lord. And I believe Jesus is raised from the dead. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for salvation. Amen. All of you who are here, those of you who prayed that for the very first time or for the first time are really meaning it, you're now saved. But it's time now to, to grow in that, to learn about that, to, 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 to get assured of that in your heart. You may not feel different right now, but God has saved you and anyone else. So these, these people are going to get your name. Make sure we have everybody's name and number, and we're going to follow up with you. Amen? You're going to get tired of recalling and texting and emailing. Amen? But make sure you all get all of their names and number. Amen? Amen. And connect. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anyone watching by live stream, we want to follow up with you too. Put your name in the chat, send us an email, put a contact up there, give us a call. We want to follow up with you because all that we do is about helping people live life according to God's will. God bless you. Have a smile on you. Let's give the Lord one more hand praise. Amen. 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 We're done now. Amen. It's 11.55. We're going to be out by 12. Amen. Amen. All right. Some of the people you know you can connect with after church, so you don't have to do it right now. Right. Okay, right. Yeah, you connect with after church. All right. All of you, we love you. We love you with the love of the Lord. We're all trying to get this right. We're all trying to walk and let God continue to mold us and shape us into his image. Amen. All right, all right. It's been a long week. It's been a long week. 
For those of us who've been churching it all week long, it's been a long week. I don't even know if Jesus worked this hard on this week, but <laughs> it's been a long week. Amen. Family, we're here on Wednesday, 12 noon to 1 for our power, then 1.30 to 2.30. Our women meet on Zoom every Saturday and encourage one another. Um, and uh, our, our doors are open five days of the week. Amen. Please make sure. Stay connected. Stay connected. I'm available to try to talk with you, to share with you, to coach you. And anything I can't do, I have a whole network of people I can work with. Amen. So don't, don't feel like you're by yourself. We can do this all together. I was just told that there are gifts for all children after church. I guess they'll be down. They'll be out there. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, neighbor. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. That was hard for some of you, right? That was hard. That was hard. Amen. 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 Now, um, the last thing I have to say is every Resurrection Sunday, we take a picture with all the kids. All the kids for the last however many. So I want all your kids come up here. And if you feel like a kid, <laughs> amen. If you want to be a kid, amen. No, seriously, it's, it's been over the years we've been able to show them the pictures and they look at themselves and they can't believe. Some of them are doctors now, some of them are doing other things. Mashar uh, Lipscomb just, you know, just did his dissertation, amen, amen. And um, quite a few were in those pictures, amen, amen. So we want to take the, that picture. Y'all ready to go home? Anybody not ready to go home? Let me see here. Let's stand and be dismissed. Let the church. Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Peace in the homes where you live. Peace in the schools where you study. Peace in the church where you worship. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said amen. 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 Children come forward. Children come forward. That's what they'll be up. They'll be up. They'll bring them. Uh, I need somebody I can try. All right here in front. All right here in front. All right here in front.